If you come across a very large form, you might want to divide it into multiple smaller forms or steps using a wizard. In this video, let me show you how you can do it in our systems. So this is my service studio. I'm inside a reactive application called student transfer request. In this application, user should be able to submit a request for transferring a student. I've not done anything much beyond just naming this application. So I'll start off by creating some relevant entities, maybe an entity for student info. It can have things like name of the student, his age, parents name, and the mother name. Uh, second thing is maybe an entity for contact information. I'm trying to create multiple entities so we can see how widgets can be used to showcase all this information into multiple forms. So content information can have things like phone, email, and address. Thereafter, just one last for education history. Education. It can have things like old school name, address, level in which the student was, last day there and of course the reason for leaving reason can be a bit longer text so let this be then after we do the modeling we'll have to link these tables together so have some sort of uh, relationship going uh, to simplify my job i'm going to create one-to-one -one relationship between these entities so one student can have one contact record against it and one education record how to do it you select the entity the target entity and the ID field of this entity has to be same as the student identifier. And that sets up one-to-one -one relationship. Same thing I'll do for education as well. So instead of long integer, this would become student identifier. And now I have one-to-one -one relationship between these entities. Now, thereafter, we'll start focusing on the screens. So first one will be my landing page. This, will, this is where I'm going to show the entire list of requests that are coming in. So transfer request uh, I don't plan to do much on this page just display the list of all the requests that are coming in so by default we'll drag and drop it brings the attributes from the student table I don't want all the ones there I do want to show something from the contact maybe the phone number and something from the education table as well maybe the old school name since they have one-to-one -one relationship it's easy for me to just drag and drop thereafter uh, we'll create a button and that would take us to the page where somebody can create a new request. And on click, we'll go to a new screen called new request and create it. So this is where the request will be created and we'll use the widget. So widget is uh, very easy to find. It's there in the widget window here. So one is the widget that by default, if you drag and drop, brings three widget items into it or three steps into it. In case you have more or less, you can just drag and drop more widget item to it and have those. If you look into the widget, uh, widget tree here, toggle it there, you should be able to see the structure of how this is configured. So when you want to get more steps, just drag and drop and add more steps to it. Something like this. Okay, so now I have four steps. But anyways, in my case, because I have those three entities, student, contact, and education, I think three, the default three works perfectly fine for me. Immediately when you drag and drop uh, wizard, first thing you want to do is give it some uh, uh, labels. So let's say the first one is step one for me. And second one would be step two. So I'm just dragging and dropping a text field from the widget window here to this place, okay? And a third one will be the third one. As you can uh, imagine, the first one will be for student info. So I'm just putting the label there, typing. Second could be the contact info. And the third would be for uh, education info. Cool. Now, very important step, the next one. So if I switch to the widget tree, now showing and displaying of which step you are it has to be controlled via some variables. In my case, I'm going to use an input parameter and I call it current step. Now, this is the variable that will tell me what exact step are we on right now. And later on, you'll see how I use this to show and hide information. So make sure the data type of this field is integer and it's not mandatory. And let's say by default, we set this value to default one. 
Okay, so in this case, we always bring it to the first step there. Once you have this, you will see that each of the step that you have in the widget is asking for a status. Now by default, there is active, next and pass. These will be, if you tie them, will work perfectly fine, but they will not be uh, dynamic. To make it dynamic, what I will do is create a, uh, a script here using the if. So if and the variable current step is equals to one. That means this is the current step entities dot steps is equals to active. If not, then I'll create one more child query and say current step. I can use IntelliSense is greater than one, which means that in that case, it's the step that has passed entities dot steps dot pass. And finally, if everything is uh, false, then entities dot steps dot next and close it off the query works so what i have done is uh, based on the current step information if it's one it will become the active if not in that case we use one more child query to check if it's greater than one in that case the step has already passed if not it's the next i will also copy this so that i can reuse this to for other widget steps so the second one here i'll modify its query I'm pasting it here, but in this case, it's step number two. So I have to just change this to two. And likewise for the third one, as you can imagine, it would be step three. Cool. So at least with this, we have uh, steps working fine. Now what we need to do is design the form. For designing the form, uh, also we'll use the uh, current step variable here to show and hide different. But that for that to start off, we'll use if uh, since I have three forms there, three steps, I put three ifs there. And in the uh, true branch of this, that's where we have to put uh, the uh, the form, the information that goes in. Before that, let's also look into the widget tree of what we have done. So widget is here. All my widget items are inside there. We don't have to touch that. But now inside the ifs, we'll have to place the, con the content that we want to display, depending on which step it is. It is. So if we'll set the conditions, if the first if is when current step is equals to one. Second if comes into play if the current step is equals to two. And the third if shows up if current step is equals to three. Okay. Now thereafter, we'll put form. Let's put form under each of the true branches. So the first form, second, and the third. Not that I'm just using the true branch. Maybe there's a better way of managing this information. This is the fastest way I can think of. Now within this each of form, I'm just going to place each of these entities. So when I drag and drop student, it becomes the student form. For the second, that would be my contact. And for the third, it would be my education. So by default, this is an accelerator in the platform that allows me to create the forms with the saving and submitting logic, all these buttons. But in my case, because we'll use uh, overall logic for going previous, next, I don't need this, uh, the respective save here. So I'm going to just get rid of this from each of the forms. So one, two, and three. Gone. So thereafter, we'll have to put some buttons. Since we have removed the uh, those buttons there, we have to create our own. How we'll do it is in the same way. So we'll create some more buttons. Let me collapse all of these things so you don't get confused. So as of now, we have the widget. We have three Fs. And after this, we are going to create some buttons. So one, two, and three. So how about this one? We can name it next or previous since this is on the leftmost. And this will be the next button. And the last one will be for submit. Cool. Uh, in case uh, you want to change the styling of these buttons, feel free to do add the styling of button primary so it also becomes blue. You can also do your style sheets if this whole style attribute is available here. Do as you please. Uh, now, in the logic of this, what we're going to do is just uh, modify the value of the current step. So this one is the previous on click. So when somebody is clicking on the previous button, we'll do 
what we'll do is the current step its value goes down by one which looks something like this likewise if i go back for the next button click it value goes up by one so which is current step equals to current step plus one something like this and for the last one where we are submitting the form that's where we have to provide the logic of saving the record in our database so first as you see the step first we'll create the student we can use create or update we'll provide the information coming from the student so student by id this form goes in there and then it will give us the id of the newly created student which we'll have to assign and use for other uh, entities as well so what i will do is i'll assign it to this local variable the screen uh, input parameter student id so thereafter i can use this you can see this is the one that is coming from the step above so this will have the id of the newly created student which then i can assign to uh, the id field of the contact table it goes something like this and the value will be of student id and same thing for the education table as well so there you go id and the value will come from the student id that has the value of the newly created student and then we'll also create the record in those tables so second goes the contact we'll provide the information of the contact fields on the form and then thereafter the education there you go with this i think our student will be created i can put a message on the screen request is created and this could be a success message and then uh, in the last step we can react the user back to the request listing now there's one more critical step left showing and hiding of these buttons so depending on which step we are we have to show only that particular button for example previous it does not make sense to show on the page one like the widget step one because there's no previous step so for that what i will do each of these buttons will start putting them into a f so includes an f previous buttons make sense only when the current step is um, greater than one cool the next step makes sense only when as long as the current step is less than three because that's the last one on the on the last page you can't have next step but on the last page we do want to show submit button so for that the current step will be equals to three i think that's it we are done what can i also do is maybe just put some spacing i can put all of these buttons into a container let me just put some margin otherwise the buttons might be too close to the form and then uh, one last thing uh, although optional in case you want to link these requests from your listing page now you just have to right click on it and link to the new request page it will already prompt you for all the information that it needs current step is default there but in case you want to provide you can provide there student id will be this one contact id will be this one although it doesn't make difference because everything is using student id by default and let's just go ahead and publish the information so as you see uh, there's a lot of if and else that we're using in there to make sure that the step navigation and all those things work in sync and with that that's how you can use the widget in our systems so i'm launching the application now there's my request listing page nothing there by default let me go on to the new form so as you can see here those three steps are here currently because the current step by default is one i'm step number one which is for student information i can provide the information of the student name age father's name mother's name and then click next thereafter let's say it's provide some phone number email go to next you can see how those conditions are being affected now each time the form goes to the next one that means that if and else condition is working there on then the name of the school could be the B school that's the old school address could be i think somewhere in malaysia um, last level could be maybe three last date and the previous school could be i don't know first of december reason could be 
expel and submit the request is created since at the end we also linked uh, the listing page to the same widget if you were to click on the record now you will see all the information there okay so next and previous just to make sure it works that's how it works on each of the screen i hope you understood uh, how to use the widget thanks for watching